Noreen here. Happy summer. I am so glad that it is finally summertime. I'm a teacher, so as you know, uh, I have a little bit of extra time during the summer, and that's when I typically catch up on a lot of my scrapbooking projects. But this summer, I thought I'd do something a little bit different, and I'm offering uh, on my blog and my Facebook page something called the Summer Scrapbook Series. And the idea is that each week I'll be posting a different challenge, um, a tip or a technique, just some new ideas to help you get some some, uh, some of your scrapbooking caught up with this summer. All right, so that'll be on each Saturday during July and August. Now, a couple of days ago on July 1st, I actually posted our first Summer Scrapbook Series Challenge. And in honor of Canada's 150th birthday, I chose the colors red and white. And that's gonna be our challenge is to use those colors in a project or layout. Um, if you do create a project or layout, you can upload it to our Facebook page uh, by Friday and July 7th, sorry, Friday, July 7th, and I'm going to have a great red and white prize pack for you. So I did share a couple of ideas of red and white themed layouts and projects that I've done before, but I thought that this would be a great chance to uh, talk about how we can use some of our stash, some of our scraps in particular colors, um, in, in some new ways. So some of these might be a little bit familiar to you, some of you these you might not have thought of. So I'm going to actually show you three different layouts that you can use from your um, patterned paper scraps uh, that are still in your stash somewhere. So I started out by going through a bunch of my different uh, paper packs. Some of these are new. These three papers here are from the Made with Love collection. We've got a couple from Mia Moore back in February. Study Buddies, which came out last fall. Um, Christmas Past, the Christmas collection that we just had. And then some of the ones that have been uh, discontinued or retired. We've got some from a year to remember. It's got some small pieces there. Fall In. And then these pieces are actually from the um, Freedom Collection uh, from the old CM. Uh, then I've got red cardstock, cranberry cardstock, and some white. So I encourage you to, you know, when you're starting a challenge like this, to go through your stash, open up some of those packages you haven't looked in for a little while, pull out anything that you think might uh, work and see what you've got, okay? Now, we're going to do, as I mentioned, three different uh, layouts. I've got a sketch for you for one of them. And for others, we're going to use some of our basic tools like punches. Um, I've got the maple leaf, the blossom place and punch. And we're even going to whoop, use the, um, the shape maker, the circle and the square. So we're going to use up a bunch of our old stuff and come up with some really cool layouts. All right, so let's get started. All right, so this first layout, I've actually kind of done a little bonus sketch for us this week that you can download. Again, like most of my downloads, you can find the link just below the video. You can also look on the original blog post and the links will be there as well. Um, and this is just a one page layout, 12 by 12, uses a couple of four by six photos and then some strips of uh, different colored papers, different pattern papers that you might have uh, and a little bit of space for a journal title and then our little embellishments. So the strips themselves, and the measurements are on here when you download it, but the strips are just one and a half inches by six inches. So you don't need very big pieces of, uh, of paper at all for this type of layout. And I'm just going to kind of lay them down. And you can see that I've kind of chosen to um, have the lightest at the top, a little bit darker, and then the darkest reds at the bottom. And I've got a couple of photos of my boys uh, taken at the 150, uh, Canada's 150th birthday party a couple of days ago. And then the strip that I'm going to use as journaling is actually a piece of striped paper. And I've just cut that to be three inches wide by six inches. So, and then we've got the room for the titling up here. And I'm actually going to journal right on the stripes. I love that little idea. And then even though I've got hearts on the... Um, layout. I thought of course uh, we'd be able to to add some uh, little maple leaves as our uh, as our embellishments. Okay so that's going to be a really fast layout to put together. All right so that's number one. All right and for 
this second layout, what I've done is I've actually trimmed a piece of uh, white cardstock just down by half an inch on two sides. So I have a piece measuring 11 and a half by 11 and a half, and I've mounted it onto a solid piece of red cardstock. Then I took the Shape Maker, and this was a uh, you know an old an old CM tool that's still available in our Going Going Gone section, and it has the interchangeable. Um, cartridges. So it's a great basic tool. This square just measures uh, two by two inches. So if you don't have a shape maker, you can certainly just cut two inch strips with your paper trimmer, turn them sideways, and then cut them into two inch squares. So I've, I've cut a bunch of papers, uh, scraps into these squares. And what I've also done is I've used it to cut some pictures down. Now, my son was involved in a parade, and that was really cool for him, and he did take some pictures on his phone, but unfortunately, they weren't the best um, quality. So a good way to use a bunch of pictures, you know, that might not be the best quality, is to trim them down and, um, and use them, in, you know, in something like this. So I'm just kind of randomly, um, I, you can see that I've got some papers cut uh, twice, and then I've got a bunch of these different photos. Um, so I'm just kind of randomly assigning them to, to spots I think they would work. And I'm going to be able to use five, um, five uh, squares across and five down. Okay, so a total of 25 squares. And I think that although I probably have, oh, here's, here's me and my Canada Day finery. Um, even though I've got, you know, I could definitely fill all sp all of the spaces with, um, you know, the uh, the squares. I think I want to leave a couple open so that I can, you know, add embellishments like the Canada Day, uh, you know, insignia, the maple leaf there. Maybe some for journaling, and then of course maybe a few others for maybe some other shapes. I could certainly pull in, you know, the blossom shape or circles uh, or some other shapes. Okay, but this is a great way to use up a variety of uh, your scrap papers, papers that you don't have a lot of, just two inch by two inch squares. All right, so that's layout number two. All right, and for the third layout, really I just have some uh, very skinny strips here. Uh, these ones are one inch by 12 inch, and then I have some half inch by 12 inch. And I thought what I would just do is kind of make use the strips to make um, a bit of a border or a frame for the photos. And I've just got three photos cut to uh, four inches by four inches. So they're just going to go in between layer these up. Sometimes it, you know, it's a little bit more work when you're working with small pieces, but I have to say I always feel very satisfied, very fulfilled as a scrapbooker when I can uh, when I can make little pieces work. So I just want that in the middle because then what I've done is I've taken the circle uh, cartridge of the shape maker. And I punched out a bunch of different um, little circle accents, and I've made enough for to go on the top and the bottom of the the photos. So these are two inch circles, and you can see that I've just kind of layered them up. So really, I've got uh, you know the circle with a maple leaf punch. Uh, I think I might use this for journaling or uh, title. This is the Blossom, Place, and Punch. This is a very small, very old, uh, that's a three quarters of an inch little circle punch. These are from the old CM years and years ago. And then this one, I just thought I'd show you that quickly. I've just taken the same circle, uh, two of them actually, and for the little sort of flower, I'm just going to cut into the center. I'm not even measuring. I'm just kind of eyeballing it, and you can see without the center there, it kind of looks like an, a weird sort of pinwheel or abstract shape. Okay, 
So I just made that really quickly with scissors and then it just goes on top of the circle and then a little, you could put a brad in the middle if you don't have another circle punch. And I made some more for the bottom, a little bit different. All right. And again, I probably won't do a lot of journaling, just maybe along this strip here, maybe with a silver pen or a white pen, just, uh, you know, saying that this was the parade out in Airdrie and giving a little bit of the details. Okay. So a couple things I want to point out. First of all, I hope you try one of these ideas and uh, definitely use your red and white. If you want to add some other colors in here, there's a little bit of green in there, a little bit of blue in there. That's perfectly fine, but try to use some red and white and then don't forget to post your um, project or your layout on the Facebook page by this Friday, July 7th, and you're going to be eligible to win a little prize pack with all of these uh, shapes as well as the um, shapes for the square layout and the strips for the other layout. So I can't wait to get that out to you. The other thing I wanted to mention is just on July 1st, actually June 30th, Creative Memories um, released a brand new product launch of mix and match papers. And there's five different papers, um, neutrals, uh, the royal blue, the evergreen, cranberry, and the eggplant. And they're all kind of this idea. It's shades of and patterns of one color family. So you could definitely use some of these ideas just with one of those paper packs. And I think you'd have a great time mixing and matching those papers together. All right. So I hope you've uh, given you some ideas on how to use red and white and also how to use some of your little wee scraps up. All right, can't wait to see what you create. Don't forget to, to uh, post those things on Facebook and I'll look forward to seeing them and I'll also look forward to uh, posting another challenge on July 8th. See you again soon, bye for now.